Good afternoon. Good evening, Miss. Good evening. Okay, we are going to continue with the sessions. Uh, today is the last day of this week. So we already complete the week number one. And it's pretty fast because you know that uh, we began the course this week. But in this case, we have four days at this moment. So we are going to uh, have completed the work of the section number one and two. And then we are going to work in section number uh, three the uh, next week. Then we are going to complete all the the uh, platform in a couple of weeks. Uh, in this case, I'm going to um, send to you the link of the document today because this is the last day and that's, um, I'm going to send to you the uh, link of the document in which you are going to access to um, to the information that we have on that uh, source. We are going to complete the information that we have for this session and also for the section number two, that is the last thing that we are going to do. We are going to provide some information about the simple pass, that is the topic that we are developing uh, in this week. And also we are going to have two exercises, but in this case, the exercises are, um, it has two parts. It has a written part and it has um, a speaking part. Los ejercicios son dos, son de lectura. Y al mismo tiempo lo vamos a tener nuestra práctica en la parte del speaking. Porque vamos a tratar de dar la respuesta de esa manera. Así que vamos a eh, tratar de completar esos dos ejercicios también para que nos ayude más con este tema del eh, simple past y no simplemente estemos hablando de gramática, sino que también podamos hacer un par de ejercicios. Now, um, in this case, I want to ask you if you have completed all the job on the platform or if you have some travels with eh, some exercises. ¿Han completado la plataforma ya o tienen algún problema con alguno de los ejercicios? Dos trece. Ok, vamos entonces a escuchar el dos trece porque es parte de audio. ¿Alguien más que no haya completado alguna de las actividades o que tenga problema con alguna de las actividades? Eh, teacher, buenas noches. En el último eh, de la sección 2, uh -huh. sección 2, sí, eh, donde habla sobre el viaje de John, uh -huh. de Jason, perdón, es la, sí. solo la, la primera me hizo falta, no, no, no la he podido completar. Ok, en este caso us, eh, voy a poner el audio para que lo volvamos a escuchar. Y luego les voy a mostrar cómo se ven las respuestas ya contestadas en la plataforma. Porque en la número uno, um, yo sé que muchos de ustedes pusieron la respuesta correcta. Hay dos formas de poner esa respuesta, pero la plataforma no las estaba aceptando. <coughs> eh, se pone de diferentes formas, una oración larga, una oración con, eh, pequeña, solo el nombre del lugar con punto, sin punto, y la plataforma no lo aceptaba. 
pero en este caso, al final de tantos in, eh, intentos, acepta una respuesta. Pero vamos a escuchar el audio para recordar la información y luego les voy a mostrar cómo se ven ya las respuestas. So, let me go to the audio and then I'm going to show you the answers. But in this case, it's charging, so give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are going to listen the audio program to understand uh, the answers. In this case, it's not like they are very uh, difficult. In this case, it's um, that we have some troubles answering, but we're going to listen. I don't know if I am having troubles or it is just the audio in this case because I um I cannot access to the audio. But give me a moment. We are going to listen to the audio. Mm. Okay, ahora sí. Welcome back. Listen to Jason and Barbara talk about their vacations. Complete the chart. Jason, hi, welcome back. You were away last week, right? Yeah, I was on vacation. Where did you go? I went to San Francisco. Nice. How was it? Oh, I loved it. What did you like most about it? Well, San Francisco is such a beautiful place, and the weather was actually pretty nice. Well, that sounds more exciting than my last vacation. What did you do, Barbara? I just stayed home. I don't have enough money to take a trip anywhere. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, not really. I actually enjoyed my vacation. I went to the gym every day. And I lost three pounds. Well, that's great. Good for you. Okay. In this case, uh, we are talking about the uh, places. Yes, in this case, we have these answers. Aquí están ya respondidas. Miss, eh, tiene mal audio. I don't know. You tell me. I don't know if someone here kind of weird. No sé si alguien más se escucha raro o se escucha, no sé. Ustedes siempre que escuchen algo diferente o no se entiende el audio pueden eh, decirme. No sé si alguien más escucha mal el audio. Ok. I was saying that... Sí, se escucha como un poquito... Trabado. Okay. Pero ahorita se le escucha bien. Okay, thank you. Um, aquí tenemos las respuestas ya, en este caso ya están, ¿verdad? Con el chequecito y todo. In the first one, we have two different options. 
eh, se supone que tendríamos que usar como el, el auxiliar, pero en ese caso no lo aceptaba, no aceptaba la oración completa. Así que intentando solo con el nombre del lugar al que Jason fue, sí la tomó como correcta, que es San Francisco. Es que yo creo que está teniendo problemas con el Inter porque en el chat yo envié una captura en donde dice que el ancho de banda de ella es bien bajo. I'm so sorry. Um, no, eh, me sacó, no me salí. <ríe> uh, it's not like, uh, I don't know. I am having troubles since yesterday, I guess. But I don't know why. Let me share again the screen. Okay, I was saying that we have two options for this answer. In in one of these options, we have like a long sentence. Um, pero en ese caso se intentó de diferentes maneras y en mi caso, bueno, eh, ahí es dependiendo del caso de todos, ¿verdad? En mi caso no me la aceptó de la forma larga, no me la aceptó con el, con el uh, podemos decir, con la estructura, sino que simplemente con el nombre del lugar. Si tienen problemas con la número uno, tienen que seguir intentando hasta que se las tome como correctas, porque en algunos casos ha tenido como esa dificultad de que se escribe la respuesta correcta, pero la, la plataforma no se las ha tomado como buenas. Pero hay que seguir intentando, intentando hasta que le salga bien. I don't know if you have completed the two sections. No sé si ya completaron las dos secciones o hay alguna otra parte. Sí, la plataforma ha tenido un, un par de fallas. Yo creo que ya todos completaron sus, eh, su sección 1 y 2, ¿verdad? Yes, it's done. Okay, very good. So, in this case, we are just going to have a review of the topic. We are going to um, write some uh, elements that we need to, to know about the simple present. And then we are going to have the exercise, but in this case, it is not related to, to the exercise that we have on the platform. Uh, I have two different exercises for you. I'm going to close this one. And I'm going to... Mm. I think I know what is the problem. I think that is... It is not problem of my internet connection. It is problem of my computer. Hmm. Okay, so I was saying that we are going to make a review. Este solo va a ser un, um, un recordatorio de lo que nosotros ya sabemos de el presente simple. Y luego vamos a tener dos ejercicios escritos. Yo les voy a poner el texto, que es el que vamos a estar utilizando para el ejercicio. Y luego van a ver una serie de preguntas. En el caso del texto número uno, van a ver preguntas. And you are going to answer the questions. But in this case, it's not in written form. Then we are going to have the second text. And in that one, we have two different parts. We are going to use one part of the exercise in which you are going to tell me the past simple of the verbs that I'm going to write in a list. And you are going to tell me what is the past of those verbs. And those verbs you are going to use it on the... On the text. Tell me. Awesome. Give me a second. I'm going to, uh, I don't know, fix this problem. Give me a second.
Okay, I think I am back. Um, creo que ya hoy sí no va a dar problemas, espero. Porque si no, entonces no es lo que yo pienso. But we're going to um, continue with this session. Um, I was saying, I don't know if you can hear me clear right now. It's better or is the same? It is the same. It is the same. Yeah. Mm. So in this case, it is not related to the internet connection because I am not uh, using my Wi-Fi connection. I am using my, my cell phone. I don't know. En todo caso, si se mejora, ustedes me van a ir avisando, ¿verdad? Si, si hay alguna mejora en esto del audio o algo por el estilo. Si no, no sé qué podríamos hacer. Ok, en este caso, uh, voy a apagar un momento la cámara para tratar de minimizar el uso de los datos. En este caso, uh, les estaba diciendo que... Eh, y vamos a hacer el segundo ejercicio donde tenemos lo que es el texto. And in the text, you are going to find a lot of uh, verbs in past. So I'm going to write the, um, the list of the verbs, but I am going to write it in base form. And then you are going to find the uh, the verbs in past you are going to use the information that you have on the text and you are going to tell me what are the uh, the verbs that we have there and past el texto trae una lista de verbos en presente y ustedes con la información que tengan en el texto me van a ayudar con la lista eh, con los verbos en pasado Ustedes me van a ir diciendo, ah, el primer verbo en el texto es de esta y esta y esta forma y vamos a ir completando la lista. Y también tenemos una parte donde vamos a decir si las oraciones son verdaderas o falsas. Y en el caso de que sean falsas o de que no estén bien escritas, you're going to tell me what is the correct statement. Ustedes me van a ayudar a corregir esas oraciones. But first, we are going to make the little review of the simple past with the information that we already know. But it is important that we um, can remember because we are going to use this um, information a lot of times because it's part of the um, communication process and also it's one of the most used structures um, that people like to use when they are talking in English because they want to remember some elements or they are talking about different uh, things that happen in their life. So in this case, we are going to focus on simple past. That is the topic that we are going to develop today. Okay, the first thing is that this one is a verb tense, which is used to show that a completed action took place at a specific time in the past. That is one of the things that we were saying yesterday, 
that in this case it is related to actions that happen in the past and also end in that time. It is also said that it's frequently used to talk about past habits and generalizations. And we are going to see different simple past forms. In this case, we are going to use different verbs that we have the irregular and the regular verbs. And in this case, we are going to use also the uh, auxiliary that was the thing that we were discussing yesterday also. And the negative forms, it's used with the auxiliary did and the negative word not. In this case, we are going to see three different examples. One of these uh, examples is a statement or a positive uh, sentence. The second one is a question and the number three is a negative statement. And the number one, we have this statement. And it said, you called Debbie. In this case, we have our verb in past, and in this one is a regular verb because you have just to add e the at the end. Next one, we have a question. And in this one, we are going to use the auxiliary did, then we are going to use the subject, the verb, in this case in its base form, and then the complement and a question mark. Did you call Debbie? Next one, the negative. We're going to take mm, almost all the things that we have on the statement, but in this case, we're going to use the auxiliary did and the uh, negative word not to complete this statement. You did not call Debbie. So in this case, what are the uses that we can give to the negative statements, or in this case, the past statements, or the simple past phrases? So we are going to use, or we are going to see what are those uses that we can give to these statements. ¿Cuáles son los usos que le vamos a dar al pasado simple? So we're going to begin with number one. This one is completed actions in the past. It says that we are going to use the simple past to express the idea that an action started and finished 
at a specific time in the past. Sometimes the speaker may not actually mention the specific time, but they do have one specific time in mind. En este caso, vamos a utilizarlo para hablar de acciones completas en el pasado, pero en algunos casos, en la, en la persona que habla, la persona que expresa sus ideas, no nos dice específicamente cuándo sucedió esta acción, pero nosotros sabemos que es algo que ya eh, pasó, ¿verdad? Que ya se completó, que ya finalizó en el pasado. And we are going to see some examples. Miss. Tell me. Eh, bueno, yo, a mí casi no me molesta, pero en otras ocasiones sí me ha molestado y quizás para las personas que estén recibiendo la clase en celular, muy chiquita la letra. En este caso, si yo la hago más grande, lo que va a pasar es que vamos a tomar mucho más espacio. Entonces, Miss, en ese, en ese caso, los que están con teléfono le pueden dar eh, dos veces a la pantalla y se les hace grande. Yes, but I'm going to try to do it like a uh, kind of bigger, like this. Aquí ya está un poco más grande para que sea un poco más cómodo para la mayoría. Thank Vamos you, a Miss. You're welcome. Vamos a tratar de mantenerlo de esta manera. So, in the examples, we have the following. In this case, we are going to use um, more like uh, regular or irregular verbs, and we are just going to use the auxiliary for negatives and for questions. Vamos a tratar de hacer nuestras oraciones, más que todo, ¿verdad? Con el uso de nuestros verbos en pasado. Vamos a agregar algunos negativos, ya con el uso del auxiliar did, y también vamos a hacer algunas preguntas, ¿verdad? Aquí vamos a eh, tratar de tener diferentes tipos de eh, statements, diferentes tipos de oraciones, incluso preguntas para ver el uso de estas eh, acciones completas en el pasado. So, in the first one, I saw a movie yesterday. I didn't see... A play yesterday. Last year, I traveled to Japan. Last year, I didn't travel to Korea. Did you have dinner last night? Did you have dinner last night? She washed her car. And the last one, oh, in this case, I'm going to move a little bit like this. He didn't watch, uh, I mean, he didn't wash his car. Okay, in this case, um, we have something uh, kind of the same in different uh, statements. In this case, we have these kind of words. I'm going to make this one. Or we are going to mark this one with this color. 
Again, we have the word yesterday, last year, again, last year, last night, Ahora, ¿por qué estoy marcando estas expresiones? Um, it's very common for us to uh, use this kind of expressions when we are like um, talking in past. Um, it is related to, to the thing that uh, we are specifying the time in which we perform this action. So it's very common that we can use this kind of expression. Vamos a utilizar estas expresiones de tiempo. Por eso se llaman in English time expressions. Expresiones de tiempo cuando hablemos en pasado. Porque estamos especificando cuando realizamos esta acción. I saw a movie. Vi una película. Nos preguntamos when, cuando, y yo puedo decir yesterday, the last year, two weeks ago, this morning. Podemos especificar el tiempo en el que hicimos esa acción. Por eso le agregamos estas eh, expresiones. Yesterday, last year, last night, eh, two weeks ago, one day ago, um, when I was a child, eh, ten years ago. Diferentes tiempos, pero que especifique exactamente cuándo. Hay otras oraciones en las que no vamos a agregar eso, como en el caso de she washed her car. Ella lavó su carro. ¿Cuándo? Nosotros no sabemos. Ella solo nos contó que había lavado su carro, pero no nos dijo cuándo. En ese caso no estamos utilizando ninguna time expression. Solo estamos eh, diciendo que ella hizo una acción. En el caso de he didn't wash his car, pues obviamente sabemos que a él le tocaba lavar su carro días atrás y no lo hizo. En ese caso no es necesario que agreguemos específicamente el día o el momento en el que lo hizo. Pero si queremos ser bastante claros, vamos a agregar time expressions, que obviamente solo se refieren al momento en el que realizamos una acción. Use number two. In this case, it's for a series of completed actions. Una serie de acciones completadas. No simplemente una acción que completamos. Una serie de acciones. Son varias acciones completadas en un orden específico. We used the simple past, and I was telling you that we have like this kind of a moment uh, in which we complete these actions. So we use the simple past to list a series of completed actions in the past. Enlistamos las acciones que completamos. These actions happen first, second, third, fourth, and so on. Ahora vamos a ver algunos ejemplos de esta aplicación. In the first one it says, I finished work, walked to the beach, and found a nice place to swim. 
I finished work, walked to the beach, and found a nice place to swim. Aquí hizo tres cosas. Primero, finish work. Terminó el trabajo. Then, walked to the beach. Luego, se fue a caminar a la playa. Y por último, found a nice place to swim. Encontró un buen lugar para nadar. Aquí es una secuencia de acciones que se realizaron en el pasado. He arrived. From the airport at eight. Checked into the hotel. At nine. And met the others at ten. Okay, in this case, another a couple of activities completed in the past. He arrived from the airport at 8, then checked into the hotel at 9, and finally he met the others at 10. And the last one, did you add floor? Did you add floor? Pour in the milk. And then add the eggs. Aquí estamos en la cocina. Le agregaste la harina. Le pusiste la miel. La miel. I mean, la leche. Y le agregaste los huevos. Es como la secuencia para la receta. En este caso. Please, como, excuse tell me. me. Tell me. Uh, did you add floor and then I don't I don't know what is the word. Pour. Es eh, eh, básicamente es agregar la leche solo que eh, en este caso como la leche no es igual que la la harina sino que ahí se se no lo podemos decir derrama. Es como vertir. Es como, vertir. Exactamente. Ajá. Es como vertir la leche, obviamente uh -huh. como es líquida, en este caso estamos hablando de leche líquida, no de leche en polvo. Entonces hay palabras específicas para diferentes alimentos. En este caso, como la leche ya es un líquido, vamos a poner pour in the milk. Es verter la leche dentro, porque ahí es está utilizando. Una P. Es que no se logra diferenciar. Es P, entonces pour. Es una P, pour. Oh, okay. Now, number three. Duration in the past. Duración en el pasado. Recuerden que todo esto se los voy a mandar. Let me see what is the time. At 8.56, I guess. A las 8.56 ustedes ya van a tener el link de este documento en el grupo de WhatsApp. Si hay alguien de los que está en esta reunión que no está en el grupo de WhatsApp, puede pedir el enlace del grupo para que puedan accesar y ahí va a estar el, el documento para que ustedes puedan entrar y ver todo lo que se está escribiendo acá. Así que, don't worry, you are going to have the information on your hands in a couple of minutes. So, in this case, duration in the past. In this case, we are going to use these um, tense uh, with a duration, which starts and stop in the past. A duration is a longer action often indicated by expressions such as for two years, for five minutes, all day, all year. 
En este caso vamos a utilizar expresiones específicas como for two years, por dos años, por cinco minutos, todo el día, all day, o all year, todo el año. Ese tipo de expresiones las vamos a utilizar en este número tres. Que obviamente, ¿verdad? Aquí lo estamos dividiendo, pero es un conjunto cuando hablamos en pasado. Okay, in this case, we have a couple of examples. And if in the first one, we can say, I live in Brazil for two years. Viví en Brasil por dos años. Next one, um, Laura studied Japanese for five years. They sat at the beach all day. They didn't stay at the party the entire time. We talk on the phone for 30 minutes. So you can see in this case, um, in the first one, when we're using the time expressions, we are not using this kind of statements in which we are using for in the time. In those uh, examples, we don't have this structure. But in this one, uh, when it's related to the duration in the past, we are using the word for. En la primera, que solo es agregarle las expresiones de tiempo, no le agregamos for para, espe para especificar en qué momento del de pasado es que nosotros realizamos esa acción. En el caso de la duración en el pasado, sí le agregamos for y el tiempo que duró esa acción o en, que, en el tiempo en el que se completó. Solo tenemos dos usos más y terminamos con esto de los usos. Vamos a ver el número eh, cuatro. Number four. And in this case is to talk about habits in the past. Vamos a hablar también de los hábitos en el pasado.
And this uh, simple past can also be used to describe a, a habit which stopped in the past. It can have the same meaning that I was saying yesterday that it has the same meaning with used to. Um, in this case, we're talking about habits. We often add expressions uh, such as the adverse of frequency. En este caso, podemos utilizar adverbios de frecuencia cuando hablamos de hábitos. También podemos utilizar frases como when I was a child, when I was younger, y expresiones que denoten eh, los hábitos que teníamos tiempo atrás. And we are going to write three examples. And in this case, we have, I studied French when I was a child. Estudié francés cuando era una niña o un niño. Next one, he played the violin. In this case, we're not going to use the expressions. We're just going to have the action. And next one, did you play a musical instrument when you were a kid? Ahí están nuestros ejemplos y vamos con el último, que es el número 5. Number 5, past facts or generalization. And in this case, it's related to describe past facts or generalizations which are no longer true. In this case, it is related also with the um, the number four that is talking about things that happened in the past but are no longer available in the present. Vamos a hablar de cosas que son um, o que fueron ciertas en el pasado, pero que ahora, pues, obviamente ya no funcionan de esa manera. No habla de hábitos, sino que de cosas que eh, sucedían en el pasado, pero que ya no más. Y vemos tres ejemplos in this case too. We have in the first one, she was shy as a child, but now she is very outgoing. She was very shy as a child, but now she is very outgoing he didn't like tomatoes before and the last one people pay much more to to make cell phone calls in the past 
people paid much more to make cell phone calls in the past. So here we have the five different ways in which we are going to use the simple past. In this case, in the last one, we have that um, this uh, general uh, or past facts and generalization. En el pasado, se dice, en, ese, en el primer ejemplo, ella era muy tímida de niña, pero ahora es bastante extrovertida, pues es bastante llevadera. En el segundo, he didn't like tomatoes before. A él no le gustaban los tomates, pero ahora pues es diferente. And in the last one, people pay much more for cell phone calls in the past. Las personas pagaban mucho más por llamadas telefónicas en el pasado. Now, we have seen the uh, different uses that we can give to the simple past. In this case, it's not just... Um, Attends, but in this case, it's related to the information that we can give to the others when we are talking in English. And even in Spanish or in different languages, we are just going to um, express the different ideas. And in this case, you can see that we are making like difference or we're making like small groups of information. But when we are using the structure, or the complete structure, uh, we are not going to make this um, like we can say the groups of ideas. In this case, we are just going to use like um, the information that we need for the expression of the ideas. Now I'm putting the image on the document, the image that we are going to use for the exercise. Este es el ejercicio. That is the last part of the. Uh, of this section or in this session also and it's related to last summer so i'm going to put in the information you're going to read the um the information that we have here and then you're going to tell me some answers because i'm going to um, give you the uh, the questions and you are going to help me with the answer. Les voy a poner el texto y ustedes me van a ayudar a contestar las preguntas. Las preguntas no se las voy a poner todavía. Eh, yo se las voy a ir poniendo despacio para que ustedes vayan pensando en la información y luego me van a dar la respuesta de este texto. This is the text. Last summer. And we are going to read the information. I'm going to give you a couple of minutes to read the uh, information that we have on the text. Then I'm going to show you the questions that we have for this um, information that we have here. So you're going to have a couple of minutes, then we're going to see the, the question, but I think we are not going to have enough time to complete the question. So. Read the information, then I'm going to write the questions on the document, and you are going to find the questions when I'm sending the link to you, and then we are going to answer the questions on Monday. It could be. So we are going to read the information here in this uh, couple of minutes, and then we are going to see some of the questions. So let's read.
Okay, in the last two minutes, we're going to re read the information to understand what is the things that we are reading in this paragraph. So in this one, we have, I am Helen. Last summer holidays, I went with my family to Paris. We went by car. There was me, my parents, my brother, Tom, and my little sister, Susan. We live in Brington and we are English. We saw the most interesting places in Paris, at the Eiffel Tower, the Louvre Museum, and we made the city tour. I love it because Paris is a very beautiful city. On the fifth day, we went to Euro Disney. That was fantastic. We all enjoyed ourselves a lot. We stayed in Euro Disney for days. They were the, max, the most exciting days I'd have in all in my life. We were all tired because we had to walk a lot to watch everything and enjoy all the amazements. My sister is only four years old and she loved it. I met all the Disney characters and they were very funny. We stayed at a hotel inside Euro Disney. Esa es la información que tenemos de las vacaciones o del, eh, del verano que tuvieron eh, la familia de Helen y Helen. Les voy a mandar el enlace del documento y les voy a estar agregando las preguntas a el día de mañana para que las vayamos viendo y vayamos pensando en nuestra respuesta y les contestemos el día lunes. So, Miss, just me. one question. What is the meaning of amusement? Los juegos de diversión o los juegos que encontramos en los parques de diversión. So, um, this is the last session for this week. So, we are going to see each other on Monday. So, have a really good night and also have a really good weekend and see you the next week. Have a good night. Thank you. Have a good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.